Hi guys and welcome back. We are going to be learning about genetics today. Uh, what I would do is I would have a sheet of paper out uh, because you're going to write some things down. Uh, we are going to do some practice problems and we're going to see uh, how good you are at genetics. Now I'm really excited to be teaching this to you because this is probably my favorite topic of biology. I love doing genetics. I think it's so interesting to see uh, how traits can be passed down through the generations. And I think it's also, hopefully, uh, fairly simple as well most of the time. It, it's kind of, everything makes sense. So, um, if you could please have a sheet of paper out or your notebook out, uh, write down these notes, and we'll do some practice in a minute. So, first thing, gene. It's a short segment of DNA that contains the instructions for a single trait. So genes are located on uh, chromosomes that we learned about in mitosis and meiosis. And uh, those genes code for different proteins, all right? And they're made up of DNA. An allele is one of the alternate forms of a gene that is in charge of a characteristic, such as hair color. Um, so let's say there's the gene for hair color, but you know, because you've seen in your everyday life, that there are different types of hair color out there that are made naturally. You know, there's blondes, brunettes, people with black hair, there's people with red hair. And uh, those are the different alleles for a gene, all right? Each gene is only going to be having one sort of form. And by the way, uh, just like last time we did notes, I'm just kind of power ahead. I'm not necessarily providing time to write because you have the pause button. You can just pause and uh, take things at your own rate, all right? Dominant alleles is expressed over recessive alleles, and it's shown with a capital letter. So, for example, we got what I'll call a big R down here, R, all right? That's a dominant allele. They're the ones that are going to show through. Uh, if you think about the word recessive, if something's recessed back in English, that kind of means like that it's hidden. So recessive alleles are only expressed if there are no dominant alleles. And it's shown with the lowercase letter. So, for example, the little r that you're seeing over here. So, key things to remember. Genes are pieces of DNA that code for a trait. Alleles are the variation of a gene. Dominant alleles are the ones that are shown. Recessive alleles are kind of the ones that are hidden unless there's no dominant allele and then the recessive ones are shown. Here's what it looks like a little bit more visually. Uh, this is the chromosome, like we talked about, mitosis, meiosis. This is a gene, this light blue portion, all right? Alleles are the different variations. So we got a dominant allele here because it's a capital letter, and we got a recessive allele over here because it's a lowercase letter. Even though it's the same portion of the chromosome, um, because we each have two pairs of chromosome, one that we get from our mother and one that we get from our father. Uh, let's say this is the one from mom. It has the dominant allele for big A, for this uh, gene. The one from dad has the little allele for little a. All right, so this person would have, whoever this individual would, would, is, would have both a big A and a little a uh, in their genome, in the traits that make up them, which will make more sense in a second. All right, so genotype is the combination of alleles for one or more specific traits. And it's just the letters. So for example, it could be big R, big R, or big R, little r, or little r, little r. Genotype is just showing what combination of alleles that you have. A phenotype is different. That's an organism's appearance that results from its genotype. So, for example, uh, if we're talking about pea plants, that's the famous example, uh, Mendel's pea plants, that you might have heard when you were in uh, middle school. Is the pea round or is it wrinkled or shriveled up? All right. Um, it's basically how does it look? All right. So genotype is what is your actual genetics? Phenotype is, okay, how do you look? All right. And again, it'll make more sense once we do some examples. All right, last slide of notes, and then we'll get into some examples. 
homozygous dominant. Remember, homo means same. I know I taught that one to you guys before. An individual that has both dominant alleles for a gene. It expresses the dominant phenotype. So it's, remember, homo means same. It's the same capitalization, right? Big R, big R. And you would have a round because the big R is a uh, capital. So this dominant allele for round is going to show through. Heterozygous is an individual that has one dominant and one recessive allele for the gene. And it expresses the dominant phenotype still. All right. Remember, hetero means different. And here you have different capitalization. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Homo means same. Same capitalization. Hetero means different. Different capitalization. Hopefully that makes sense. But you'll notice that both of these are round. And the reason for that is this big R dominant allele is showing through. Over here it has two, so it's going to be round. And over here it has one big R, but that's still enough that it'll show the dominant phenotype, the one that is, uh, that one that shines through. So it'll be like round, like this. Homozygous recessive is an individual that has both recessive alleles for a gene and expresses the recessive phenotype. Remember, homo means same. And what you're going to see down here is that as well. Notice how over here, once it goes away, once that little thing goes away, it's two little r's, all right? Homo means same. It's the same capitalization. But now instead of it being homozygous dominant, where you're showing the two dominant alleles, the two capital letters, it's homozygous recessive, and you're showing the two lowercase alleles. And this time it's going to be wrinkled. It's going to be the trait that uh, is recessive because it doesn't have a dominant allele to take over and make it round. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of practice. It says here, tongue rolling, which is big T, is dominant over non-tongue rolling, which is little t. For each of the following, write the genotype. All right. So what I'd like you to do is uh, I'm going to put in a little bit of music here. And in that time, I want you to go and write out what you think this is. So you'd write on your sheet, homozygous dominant. And then what is it? Is it big T, big T? Is it big T, little T? Is it little T, little T? Whatever you think it is. Then you do this one. Then this one. All right. So here's some music. Try it out. And let's see if you get it right. So hopefully that was enough time. Let's see how you did. If something is homozygous dominant, remember, homo means same. So that's going to be two of the same capitalization. Now, the key is, is it going to be the two that are like this that are the same? Or is it going to be the two like that that are the same? Well, the thing that's going to give it away is the fact that it says dominant. Dominant is going to be the big one, like you're really dominating, like you're going to be the big, strong person, all right? So homozygous dominant is going to be that, big T, big T, all right? And I'm using the letter T because that was what was provided to me over here. Also, sometimes maybe they don't provide you with the letter. Whatever the dominant one is, 
they usually use the first letter of that thing. So because it's called tongue rolling and tongue starts with a T and it's that one's dominant, that's why we're going with big T over here. All right. Homozygous recessive. Remember, homo means same. So that's going to be two of the same. And because it's recessive, it's going to be two little t's. Heterozygous, hetero means different. So it's going to be two different capitalizations, and it's going to be like this. All right? Now, this isn't part of it, and I'm not going to ask you about it, but just in case you're curious, these are their genotypes because they're all letters. If my question was, hey, what's the phenotype? This guy would be tongue rolling. Because he has a dominant allele, all you need is one, and he has two, so he's definitely tongue rolling. This one is going to be non tongue rolling because he doesn't have any of the dominant alleles that he needed. So he's going to show the recessive trait, which is non tongue rolling. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, and heterozygous, their phenotype, so how they look, is that it's going to be tongue rolling, all right? Because it still has at least one big T. Just one is all it takes. If it has two, hey, double duty. Doesn't mean you're any better of a tongue roller. Uh, it just means you got two copies of the dominant trait. All you need is one to show the dominant trait, which is tongue rolling, okay? So there's that. Um Let's try uh, the next slide. So on here, we got a whole bunch of questions. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to do these. If you want to pause the video right now, I'm not going to provide music this time, but if you want to pause the video and copy this down and try it out on yourself, uh, on your own, be my guest. Uh, I'm just going to do it straight away right now uh, because it's our first one. So I want to make sure that you have it right. But if you're looking for a challenge, if you want to say to yourself, hey, you know, I got this, go ahead, pause it and try it out on your own. All right. So here we are in paint. Um, on your sheet, you'll just be drawing this. Uh, in order to figure this out, you need to do a Punnett square, which you should hopefully be familiar with from middle school. If not, here's how you do it. They're not that hard. You're going to make a box on your sheet. Looks like that. Then you're going to divide that box up into four different parts. So you're going to make a line down the middle like that. And you're going to make a line down the middle the other way like that. All right. And you're going to go and take the information that's given to you and put it up top. So uh, we see here that brown eyes are dominant over green eyes. And the dominant allele is expressed as a big B and the recessive is a little b. The male with the genotype BB, big B, little b, is married to a woman with green eyes. Okay, so we got to kind of interpret this information here real quick. All right. So um, it says that the male has a big B and a little b. So you're going to split those alleles up so that one goes over the top of each box. So a big B there and a little b over there. All right says the woman has green eyes. So because she has green eyes, what is her genotype going to be? What are her letters going to be? Well, green eyes is recessive because it says brown eyes are dominant over green eyes. So green eyes has to have two um, little b's because if it had a large b, a capital B, it wouldn't be green eyes anymore. It would be brown eyes because that dominant trait would show through. So on this end, we're going to split the females alleles, and it's going to be like this, two little bees. So we got the male up here and the female over here. Okay. First question that I asked you is, hey, what's the phenotype of the male? Well, let's see. The male has the genotype big B, little b. So that's the genotype. That's the letters. The phenotype is how you look. So what type of eye color is he going to have? Is it going to be brown eyes or is it going to be 
green eyes. If you're thinking that it's brown eyes, you're correct because he has at least one large capital B. So the right answer for this is brown eyes. All right, so the next question I kind of already answered for you. What is the genotype of the female? Well, because we know that she has green eyes, we know that her genotype, which is the letters, has to be little b, little b. Because if she had a capital B, like the boy did, then he, she'd have brown eyes. But green eyes is recessive, so it has to be two little b's. So her genotype is going to be, you'd write it out as little b, little b, just like that. All right, the last question is, what is the probability of producing a child with green eyes? And this is kind of why I like studying genetics so much, because it kind of gives you an idea of what might be in your future. Um, it's really hands-on, and it's really applicable. So to figure out the probability of producing a child with green eyes, you have to combine these uh, letters within the boxes. So let's do that. This capital B is going to come down and it's gonna meet up with this uh, B over here. So we're just kind of seeing what's gonna go into this box. So it's gonna be a big B and a little B, all right? For this box over here, this capital B is going to come down and this little B is gonna come across. So it's gonna be big B, little B. Over here, this little B is gonna come down, this little B is gonna come across, little B, little B. Same thing over here. Little b comes down, little b comes across, little b, little b. It's going to look like that. So the question says, what's the probability of producing a child with green eyes? Well, we know from a previous question that green eyes has little b, little b. So when we look at this box, these are all the possibilities of the children that this couple can make. So green eyes is little b, little b. That shows up half of the time, right? It's in two out of the four boxes, so that's half the time. So the probability is 50%, all right? If I asked what's the prob probability of producing a child with brown eyes, it would be 50% because these guys would be brown-eyed babies, okay? All right, let's do a little bit more practice questions. All right, so this if this was a normal class, this would be your closer. Which of the following is a genotype? So you got options one, two, three, four, five. All right, take a second, look at it, see if you can determine what the correct answer is. All right, let's see if you got it right. If you remember from before, genotype is the one with just the letters. Okay, so right away, we should be able to eliminate number three and number five. And that narrows it down to the ones with just the letters, number one, number two, or number four. Now, the thing about genotypes is, if you notice from previous questions, they always have the same type of letter. The dominant one is capitalized, and the recessive one is in its lowercase form. So if you look here, this doesn't work. This doesn't work, but this does. So if you said question number or uh, answer number four is correct, you got that one right. Good job. Last one. It says brown hair is dominant over blonde hair. What col What could be the genotype of someone with brown hair? Take a second, look at it. Let's see if you get it right. All right, so it says brown hair is dominant over blonde hair. So anytime you see a capital B, that person is going to have brown hair. So the question is, what is the genotype of someone with brown hair? This guy is going to have brown hair because it has at least one capital B. And so is this guy. He's also going to have brown hair because it has at least one capital B. This doesn't. So this is going to have blonde hair. That's the recessive trait because it doesn't have a single capital B in it.
So the correct answer, once again, is number four. Options one and three would both have brown hair. Okay. Let's take a look at the homework that you're going to have today. All right. This is pretty neat. Um, what you need to do is follow the directions up here. So it says type your answers into the red boxes. If your answer is correct, the box will turn green. If your answer is incorrect, the box will stay red. Spelling has to be correct in order for the box to turn green. One problem in each section is done for you as an example. So let's do this one as an example over here, just to kind of show you how it works. It says determine the phenotype for each genotype using the following information. Uh, big Y is for yellow, and it's dominant to blue, which is little y. Square shape is S, which is dominant to round, which is lowercase s, long noses, big L, are dominant to short noses, little l. So this guy right here, because of this genotype, is it going to be yellow or is it going to be blue? Take a second, think about it. Let's see if you get it right. Well, if you said that it is going to be yellow, you are correct because it has at least one capital Y and big Y is dominant, all right? So what you would do is you would type in yellow over there and enter, and hey, look, the box turned green. So you know that you got it right. But if I didn't do that, and instead I wrote in blue, it wouldn't show up as green, and you know that you got it wrong. So pretty nifty, huh? Also, make sure you spell it correctly, all right? Like it said in the instructions up above. So if I misspell this, uh, YOLO, <laughs> it's not going to show up, all right? Uh, you need to spell it correctly in order for it to be right. All right. Uh, also, don't forget to complete part two by clicking the part two tab. Very important. Make sure you get all your points by doing part two, all right, as well. So part two is down over here. You're going to click, and here it is. And again, I'm going to do the first one with you. There's only six problems, so you're in luck. All right. Some things I want you to know. Punnett square boxes are not going to change color like these are. The only ones that are going to change color are the ones that are highlighted in red. Um, there are six problems, so make sure you do them all, all right, before you submit it to me. And uh, you must put spaces in between the numbers and the columns and the ratios. So, for example, you want to put spaces like this where there's a space between the number and the colon. You don't want to make them all uh, squished together. Otherwise, it won't show up as being green, even if you got it right. Okay, so here's our first one. SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Scoozy's round pants at a dance. SpongeBob is heterozygous uh, for his square shape, big S and little s, which is what you're seeing here, a big S and a little s. But Sponge Suzy is round, little s, little s. Fill in the punnet square to show the possibilities that would result if SpongeBob and Sponge Suzy had children. So let me go ahead and do that right away. This big S is going to come over. The little s is going to come down. Big S and little s. Same thing here. Big S is going to come over. Little s is going to come down. Big S, little s. Over here, little s comes down. Little s comes over. It's going to be little s, little s. Over here, little s comes down. Little s comes over. Little s, little s. All right? And again, none of these are going to change because it's only the ones that are in red that are going to change if you get it right. So it says, what is the percent chance of an offspring with square pants, all right? Remember, square is going to be anything with the capital S. So what's the percent? If you said 50%, you are right, because two out of the four are uh, showing this square shape, the dominant S, all right, the big S. So if I write 50 in here and hit enter, it turns green, yay, I got it right, all right? What is the percent chance of offspring with round pants? All right. Again, if you said 50, you're going to be right because two out of the four or half of them are going to be uh, round. So if I write 50 in there, it's going to be right. Yay. Again, if I wrote, whoops, if I wrote the wrong number in there, let's say I said 25, it would not show up as being green. So let's make sure you get it right. Okay. And that says, what is the genotypic ratio of Big S to little s to little s to little s. So it's asking for a ratio just like over here. So this sounds difficult, but really it's not that bad. Here's all you got to do. 
How many big S, little s boxes are there in here? If you said two, you're right. So I'm going to write two, but I'm not done. Then I need to show a ratio, and you do that by showing the colon. And remember, you can't bunch it all together like this. You have to space it out. So I'm going to do two, space, colon, and then space again. And I'm going to write the number of boxes with little s. How many? Two boxes. One, two. Hit enter. Hey, I got it right. It's green. Now, those of you guys who are smarty pants might realize that, hey, this can be reduced, just like in math class, to one to one. But uh, the way this is formatted, if I was to write one to one, even though that is technically correct, it doesn't show up as being right. So you're just going to do just a normal basic count when you fill this out. And two to two is going to be the correct because there's two boxes of big S, little s, two boxes of little s, little s. All right. With that, hopefully, uh, that will help you to learn this a little bit better, give you a little bit of feedback. Uh, you are going to submit this on Haiku, just like you normally do, using that plus hand in button. Uh, good luck. Email me if you have any questions, and I will be happy to help you out. Have a good rest of your day.